welcome to The Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. This week we are delving deeper into the why and wherefores of building a granny flat or studio. While many owners are thinking of building a secondary dwelling for an older relative or young adult, others are doing it purely for investment purposes. So what's involved and what are the pitfalls? Joe Chivers of Property Bloom is talking to Peter Newbold. Joe Chivers from Property Bloom. Tell me what your, your organisation does. Sure, Peter. It's lovely to have to be on today. <laughs> uh, Property Bloom is a project management business. So what we do is we project manage small developments for clients. So we'll find a property that can be developed and we use various strategies depending on the client's goals and what they're trying to achieve. So it ranges from a granny flat type project right through to a, a dual occupancy project with subdivision and then on to medium density, depending on the client's budget and what, and what they can afford really to do. Why would you prefer to build a granny flat as an investment strategy rather than subdivide and build? Yes, well not all clients can afford to do uh, a subdivision. Subdivision co can cost quite, um, costs can go quite high. Um, also not every property is actually suited for a subdivision and, and a dual occupancy type development. So a granny flat strategy can work um, with a lot of different properties. Not all properties but it can be quite a quick way and a cost effective um, investment strategy for, for people to use to, to create some good yield. Well the property laws in New South Wales changed um, when the affordable housing SEP came in. That made it quicker and easier for people to build these properties. Um, but is it is it an easy way to make a quick buck? Well, I wouldn't say it's an easy way to make a quick buck because you do need to be very careful. And, not, and as I said, not every property is suited for a granny flat type development. But yes, they, they set, when the affordable housing SEP did come in, um, we were able to turn around um, approval process within 10 days. Now that has recently changed. So it's now gone out to 20 days. So there's been a few little changes to that SEP along the way. But it is still a relatively quick uh, strategy that you can use as long as you know what you're doing. And, and what do you have to know? All right. Well, you need to you need to have a good understanding of the requirements. You need to make sure, uh, in the first place, that the property is a complying property, so you can put the complying development application through using private certifier. And if you do that and it is complying, then you can do it, uh, have it approved within the 20 days. Um, you need to make sure it's a suitable size. So you, you know you, you don't want to put a granny flat on a on a piece of land that's too small. You want to make sure there's enough yard space and outdoor living space for both the granny flat tenant, <coughs> excuse me, and the uh, house tenant as well. Um, you want to make sure that uh, the area is suitable because not it's, you know some areas around capital cities really are quite you know densely populated. So you don't want to squeeze in a granny flat if it's not going to work properly with that. With, with what we do with Property Bloom, we look at properties that are really 800 square metres to 1,000 square metres. But 450 is the minimum, but you reckon that's a bit small? Yeah, I think 450 is a very small block and it'll depend on the size of the existing house too, Peter. So what we do up in the Hunter is we look for block sizes that are a minimum of about 800 square metres to 1,000 and we always look for blocks that have dual access. So an access point, so the tenant in the granny flat can have a separate access, the house has its own access. Um, um, we, we look for homes that have got good bones that don't need a lot of renovation, maybe just a little cosmetic spruce up so we can increase the rent uh, to the market rent. Sometimes they're a bit under rented when we find them. So paint, uh, new carpet, freshen up some repairs. And then one of the most important things is to look at what the meter box, the electrical meter box is like in these old homes, older homes. Sometimes they will require an upgrade to be able to support the services that the granny flat needs. So that's one of, one of the really important things to look for when you're looking for a property just that will suit a granny flat. Can that strategy. be quite costly then the electric box? Yeah it can range, it could be around five or six thousand dollars depending um, on the actual upgrade that's required. Sometimes a house might, may need complete rewiring and that's, that's an expensive process. So what's the maximum you reckon you should spend if you have looked at a property it already has a house on, the house needs a bit of a spruce up, what's the maximum? Oh, we look to spend about ten to 15000 So just a cosmetic renovation, some repairs, freshen up the place, get the tenants in. If we can, 
find a house that we can create a, a fourth bedroom from. We always look for houses at a three bedroom minimum. But if we can get a fourth bedroom, that's great and we can do that cost effectively, we'll always look for that. But again, looking at the location of the house on the block is really important, the aspect. We always try and go for north facing properties so we've got the right energy rating for the granny flat or the optimum sunshine for the living spaces, for both the house and the granny flat. Uh, we look for, as I mentioned, the access points are really important. So you've got a separate access for the granny flat. You don't need to provide off-street parking for the granny flat, although to most tenants do like to bring their, their car off the street. So if there's room enough for a little hard stand to put your car off the street or a carport, then we're always looking for those type of properties. And are some suburbs better than others for, for one of these granny flat strategies? Yes, well, if, you, if you're an investor and you're looking to go into this for investment yield, you want to look for suburbs that have a high demand for rent. And you also want to look for suburbs where they're not too, it's not too densely populated. You really want the larger block sizes and you want to make sure that there's good demand for the rental rentals and good sales history as well. So you're looking for a granny flat investment strategy. Is that more suitable for some people than others? A granny flat development is all about yield creation um, because we, we get, you're, you're actually getting two incomes from the one property. So that's why with the house renovation, you want to try and get it to the, the level where you can increase the rent to the maximum you can get. That's according to that particular market. And with the granny flat, you're actually adding that second income. So it's all about the rental return and the yield. So you want to keep the costs as low as possible on this type of development, because it's not about capital gains really, or creating equity through the development process. Although when a sale in the market, and this is a bit of a trick at the moment, is that there's no relevant comparable sales in the market or well, there's very few because people are, are, are building granny flats to hold and to take advantage of the higher yields. So once people do start selling off those um, properties with the new granny flats, we'll have some comparable sales in the market and then that will then determine how much uh, equity or capital gain you can actually get from this type of strategy. But it really is about the yield. It's about high yield and um, creating a cash flow positive investment for, for the investor. Because these, these um, properties, not many have sold, does that mean it can be difficult get, getting finance for these kind of investments? Well, it's just simply a construction loan, but it's really important that you talk to your lender before you start the process and you find a property to, to build. So you want to make sure your lender does offer construction lending. And then it's about finding sales references in the market for when the lender goes to do the valuation for the construction loan and that, that's where it can get a little bit tricky if there no, are no comparable sales. The valuer will then have to look for larger properties, maybe five bedroom homes and try and compare and, and value the property um, as complete like that. It depends how your bank and lender is setting up your construction lending. They may just lend you a percentage of the builder's contract, maybe 80% LVR of the builder's contract or they may value the property as complete and do a tentative on, on completion valuation. And that's where the trick is to find the comparable references for the valuer. So it can get a little bit tricky. Uh, my advice is to make sure you've got enough cash supplies to, to fund the shortfall of your funding. So don't, don't leave yourself too short because you may just find you may need to put a little bit more cash into the deal. So that's one possible pitfall. What are, what are the others? Well, it's really about site selection then. You've got to make sure you, you select the right site. The house at the front has to be the right type of property where you can maximise the rent in, in, in a decent condition, so you're not spending too much on the reno. You've got to check that electric, uh, meet the electrical meter box, make sure that's in a, a good condition, or if it does need an upgrade, budget for that. Um, and then it's all about access as well and aspect, making sure you've got the right aspect for the block. Um, you have to remember that the tenants in the granny flat will still need to take their garbage bins to the front street. Even if they've got, say, a rear lane ac access, so they can't put the bins out generally in the rear lane. So they'll have to have some sort of walking access to the front of the property to collect their mail. So you've got to put the mailbox and, and the garbage bins at the front. Little things like that, you've just got to think of everything and think out um, outside of the square a little bit and really make sure that you've covered off all of the things that you need to with this type of construction. Now, what about the, the, the hidden costs? There must be some. Well, yes, it's, um, it's interesting that you ask that because when you apply for your complying development, even though you're using a private certifier and not necessarily going into council, 
um, you just got to be careful because some councils are charging a section 94 contribution. Now this contribution is a, is a, it's a council fee that it's at the discretion of the council whether they charge that um, and in, in, some, in some cases we haven't had to pay it, in other cases we have. So that's something you can ask your private certifier about whether that fee will be payable and it can range depending on that council so it's all it's different for every council. So make sure you budget for something like that. And this granny flat here Jo, how typical is it of the projects that you generally work on? Oh it's very typical Peter, it's a 60 square metre granny flat, um, it's made we're at the timber frame stage at the moment, uh, we've built this one on a slab but we can build on piers, we often do build on piers um, which allows us to build to the natural slope of the ground a little bit more. We're going to have a colour bond roof, uh, it's clad in the lightweight material um, and the Axon product we use, it's quick and easy, looks modern. Um, and, it's, and it's good energy rating as well. So the guys can have uh, pretty much the, the flat completed at lockup within about two weeks. So that's the whole, um, the whole benefit of using the lightweight cladding. And, and one of the other benefits is with the builder we use, they actually prefabricate the wall system. So they bring it to site and the walls go up within a day and then the roof goes on and then we're at lockup very, very quickly. So the, the, the benefits that we can bring to a granny flat project is the getting the quick approval, but also having the, the building completed very quickly. Okay, well, we've, got, we've um, got a case study of a house that we completed up in the Hunter. It's a house that was a four bedroom house on a, on a thousand square metres, it has a dual access. We spent about 20,000 on that renovation because the house was a little bit larger. It actually has two bathrooms in this house. So we were able to maximise the yield from the house. I think it was renting at around 200 a week when we bought it and we were able to get 350 a week for the house just by spending 20,000 on it. Um, and then we uh, had our complying development approved within 10 days for the granny flat and the granny flat went up within about six weeks it was completed and the, and the flat's renting at 280 a week. So the yield on that particular project is very high. It's up around the eight and a half percent. So that's, you can imagine that's pretty good. Yes, you can imagine um, <laughs> if you're getting, you know, the interest rates are so low at the moment. So if you're getting your finance at around four and a half percent, and you're getting yield about eight, eight and a half percent, then it's a fantastic um, high yield creating strategy for investors. And your costs? Well, we charge a flat project management fee. So our fee is twenty-two thousand, including GST, to project manage right from the beginning. So looking for that that site and making sure it is the right site, doing our, running our feasibility, we inspect the property, we put a budget together for the renovations and for the granny flat build. And then we manage the complying development application, the design of the plans, and then into the build phase. And then we work with our local agents as well to get the tenants in as quickly as possible. Um, and remembering you've got a tenant in the front house as well, bringing in rent whilst the granny flat is um, getting approved and, and under construction. So. Um, our job is really to bring in the project as quickly and cost effectively for our clients so we can save them quite a lot of money. We do have a discount structure in place with our builders and contractors as well that's passed straight on. And even the agents that we work with, they offer our clients a discounted management rate too.